Yeah, hello, and thank you so much for Hi. taking the time today. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? <laughs> really good. good, thank you. Well, Encanto, that's the title of your new animated feature film, but also a great expression. It's Spanish for magic, for enchantment, but also delight. What does the idea behind Encanto stand for? Oh, wow. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. Um, when we first started talking about this this movie, um, and uh, we knew that we wanted to tell a story about family, this giant extended family, but the question was, where in the world to set it? Um, and uh, our friends kept on pointing us towards Colombia. And there's a, a few, I mean, a lot of things about Colombia that are amazing. It's the most biodiverse place on the planet. Um, you know, you have amazing food and dance and music and architecture and cultures, all sort of this giant melting pot. It's also the home of magical realism. And one of the things we kept hearing was that magic runs in the streets and there are these towns, these Pueblo Magicos, these, these magical towns. And in some places there, they call them Encantos, these, these, this place of spirituality, this place of magic. So, so the idea of of naming this movie that, that had not just that meaning, but all of these other meanings that really define what our story is about, that has this, this, this fun, this wonder, this whimsy, and this different type of magic uh, was, was, I think, the perfect title for the movie. And I think it also just, it, it, like you're saying, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the movie in just one title. <laughs> Well, Disney is about inspiration, and I know you also get inspired to make such beautiful, colorful, and creative movies like Encanto. So where does your inspiration come from, especially for your newest Disney movie? Well, you know, it's amazing because this is the 60th animated feature from Walt Disney Animation Studios. It's inc like incredibly, like in a couple of years, we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary at the studio. So that legacy of great Disney storytelling is always top of mind with us as we're starting these projects, but we're always looking to do something new, to push to something, some new level. And I think for this movie, a movie about an extended family, the, with the complexities of a family, the challenges of family, the beauty of family, the humor of it, and how uh, incredible it could be to have 12 principal characters. It's very tough on Jared and Charisse as screenwriters because they had to balance all that. <laughs> but for Lynn, Lynn Omal Miranda, who did our amazing music, he loves musical problem solving and that the tapestry that he wove with all the different characters and how it comes together was was great and the fact that lynn was with us five years ago when we started the project and then he went with us to colombia he went to all of these tiny little towns that are frozen in time and he could absorb all the different percussion and tiples like uh, colombian guitars and think about that as he was like forming the songs in his head was um was really incredible and it turned out to be just this wonderfully warm, funny, engaging, very emotional movies. We're very proud of the team, what they've created. Well, you already said that um, the 60th animation uh, animated film from Walt Disney Animation Studios is once again a classic musical to the core. So when was it decided that Encant would be a musical? And was there a special reason to involve such a genius like Lin-Manuel Miranda for the songs? <laughs> Well, you know, what's really interesting is, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sharice, jump in there. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go, go. I, I was going to say, we, we actually, we knew it was a musical before we even started the idea. Uh, you know, Byron and I uh, worked together on on uh, on Zootopia, Zoomania, obviously, as it's known in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, you know, we said we, we are lifelong musicians. We love music. And we're like, the next thing we work on must be a musical. Uh, I had just finished uh, working with uh, Lin-Manuel on Moana. And he said, I want to do another musical, but I want it to be the definitive Latin American Disney musical. And so we went, all of these things work together. Let's all work on that uh, and find something new. And so literally from day one, we knew it was going to be a musical. We knew that we wanted to bring in the amazing music of Latin America. Uh, and it was just, what story do you want to tell? And we all had these crazy extended families that are wonderful and also a challenge. And it felt like this is a great thing to to tell a story about and to sing songs about. Teresa, do you have something to add? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just going to say that working with Lin Manuel was just absolutely a dream come true. I mean, he's just a genius in terms of incorporating different types of musical styles and making them flow seamlessly together and really relating them to character. I think one of my favorite songs in the movie is. Uh, 
Dos Oruguitas, which is like the, the song that's in Spanish. And it feels like this folk song that's just always existed. He just created it and it, it feels so uh, epic and, and like it's always been there. Um, and I think that's just one of the most amazing parts of the genius of what he does. Mm -hmm. Well, the next single question uh, also goes to you, Therese. I looked up your background in advance and I was kind of surprised that there are some very horror heavy productions in there. <laughs> How was it for you to, to switch to such a colorful Disney environment like the one we find in Acanto? Absolutely. You know, it was, I, I love working in different genres. I love stories that are grounded in character and relationship and high stakes, personal stakes uh, that then have some kind of interesting, expansive genre element related to them. So I worked on this Netflix show called The Haunting of Hill House, which is about a family that happens to live in a haunted house. And Encanto is a movie about a family that lives in a magical house. So even though they seem very different on the surface, they're actually uh, related to each other in a way. <laughs> well, you already said it. We have so many great characters in Encanto, but that's one special character that isn't really that obvious. It's the house of the family madrigal. So how challenging was it to bring a house to life that is considered rather static and rigid? Oh, you know, it was actually, it was super fun. One of the, that was one of the yeah. first ideas that we pitched about this movie that, because we thought if it's a family blessed with magic in this magical valley, this Encanto, why wouldn't the house have magic? And then thinking about the house as a character, because your home as a family is so much of who you are and it reflects, it protects you, it shelters you, it's, it's there, it's there for you all the time. And it's a representation of who you are as a family. So the animators went crazy when we pitched that idea. So they were like, yes, absolutely, we have to do that. One of the things we wanted to make sure we did was be true to the materials in the house because Colombian houses are constructed in a very specific way with tiles and wood. So wood needed to feel like wood, tiles needed to feel like tiles. So we needed to obey the rules of physics. But we, I can tell you, we, it was very tough because we kept asking our animators to animate new parts of the house that weren't built to move as we got new ideas. And Casita herself, the, the house, just kept wanting to be in the movie more and the more we put Casita in the house and the relationship with Mirabel and the rest of the family members, the house, the house plays favorites. It's kind of like a family dog that wants to be close to some people and away from other people. Uh, but you just have an affection for it. It's just like you fall in love with the house. And that's that's a unique thing that I think only animation can do. And we know the Madrigal family is very talented for uh, in their skills. And what magic power or gift from a Madrigal family member would you like to have for yourself? Uh, I'll start. I'd, I'd say, without a without a doubt, I'll go with Isabella's flower power. I would love to be able to have flowers spring from my fingertips. I would smell, I would smell great all the time. So I would, I'll go with Isabella's flower power for me. I would also like Jared to smell great all the time. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I say, often, you know, for me, as like I would, I always think we're asked this question. Like, I, I'm terrified of heights, so I would love to be able to fly without fear, just fly through the air and just zip from place to place. <laughs> Great point. <laughs> and Therese, you? <laughs> With uh, Camilo's shape shifting, I'd love to just take on any disguise and turn into anyone. I think that would be really fun. Great. Thank you so much for your answers and taking your time. I wish you every success with Encanto. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Great have a great you. one. Bye. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.